diabetes reversal, um, it's, it's not universally agreed upon in terms of the diagnosis, but generally what folks look at there is blood glucose and hemoglobin A1C that's below the diabetes threshold. And that's maintained through lifestyle changes or through things like bariatric surgery. Um, so one important thing to note there is that sometimes you'll hear people you know, put up some um, criticisms or questions around, well, if somebody reverses their diabetes and they go back to eating nothing but ice cream again, then it won't be maintained. And, and that's true. So it, it's important to note that this is something that people need to make lasting changes. And it's going to vary person to person. You know, I see in my patients that some people can add back some carbohydrates to find a level that they find more sustainable. And other people need to stay, you know, more in that potentially ketogenic range. Um, and then we have remission where we look at partial remission, which is that A1C below 6.5 uh, for greater than a year and off diabetes meds. And then complete remission, which has a pretty strict criteria. So that's a totally normal hemoglobin A1C um, below the, the pre-diabetes threshold for two years and off of medications. And one thing that's interesting to note there is that Kaiser did a study a few years back um, and they looked at their sort of remission rates in their general population. Um, and basically the remission rates in, in the, a large cohort, I think of more than 100,000 people, was far below 1%. So the idea there is that generally when people get diabetes, um, it's not expected that they're gonna go into re reversal or remission. Um, but I'll show you a little bit how we can potentially change that. If you want to learn more about the science of epigenetics and nutritional longevity, check out my newsletter at dotraronica.com and in the link below this video, so you won't miss my upcoming free webinars, courses, and live Q&A.